Europe struggles to replace Russian oil. On September 2, 2022, the G7 group of nations agreed to cap the price of Russian oil in order to reduce Russia's ability to finance its war with Ukraine without further increasing inflation. Joined by the European Union and Australia, the sanctions took effect on December 5, 2022. However, the European Union relies heavily on Russian natural gas for its energy needs. As a result, in an attempt to put a squeeze on Russia and find alternative sources of these resources, many European countries have been feeling the pain more than Russia. Hi and welcome back to another video of Finance Sense, where we cover all the latest trends in the financial markets and the economy. In this video, we'll analyze the EU's plan to lessen its dependence on Russian oil exports and natural gas, and we'll evaluate Europe's challenges in finding alternatives. But before that, make sure to like this video, subscribe, and click on the notification bell to stay updated with our videos. Ursula von der Leyen, president of the European Commission, claims that Europe has avoided a severe energy catastrophe. Data, however, indicates that electricity prices remain high even though energy-related issues differ from nation to nation. Electricity rates are higher now than they were a year ago, and that's despite the overall decline in commodity costs. Due to the high cost of electricity, some businesses were forced to close their facilities, while others, like Dow Chemical, had to lay off employees. In order to lessen its reliance on Russian oil and gas, the European Union has established new energy alliances with nations like Qatar, Egypt, Azerbaijan, and the U.S. Despite continuing gas imports from the Turkish Stream and LNG, the EU has successfully decreased its dependency on Russian energy supplies. The European Union is preparing to restrict the import of refined petroleum products from Russia. They intend to accomplish this goal by boosting the number of commodities that they bring in from the Middle East as well as the United States. Europe has been Russia's top consumer of diesel. However, once the embargo went into effect, they were forced to find alternative sources to replace the roughly 1 million barrels of daily fuel imports from Russia. And this also includes 600 to 650,000 barrels of diesel. Furthermore, there is a chance that the Middle East won't be able to meet Europe's demand because of delays in the commissioning of new refineries. The amount of diesel that Russia shipped abroad in December hit a new all-time high of 1.2 million barrels per day, with the European Union taking 720,000 barrels per day of that total. However, after a significant amount of time, things will be different because Russia will attempt to reroute its refined goods, and Europe will look to other sources like the United States, the Middle East, and Asia for supplies. In addition, due to the delays occurring at various Middle Eastern refineries, Europe will be forced to raise the amount of oil they purchase from the United States and Asia. The biggest OPEC producers in the Middle East are working to increase the number of refined products they ship to Europe. For example, Kuwait intends to raise the amount of diesel it sends to Europe by a factor of 5 this year, bringing the total to almost 50,000 barrels per day. In 2023, the nation also plans to sell twice as much jet fuel to Europe, or around 5 million tons. Recently, the Mina Alamadi refinery sent its first delivery of diesel, according to a recent statement from the Kuwait National Petroleum Corporation. This is ideal for cold weather and is ecologically friendly. Unfortunately, the al Zur refinery has not yet attained full operating capacity, despite being able to process 615,000 barrels of oil and generate 145,000 barrels of diesel per day. Moreover, the refinery's second unit is expected to begin operations in the coming months, followed by its third and last line. It is anticipated that by the end of 2023, new refineries in Saudi Arabia and Oman will hopefully fill the diesel and fuel deficit in Europe. But, according to commodities researcher Ahmed Mehdi, there is a possibility that there could be delays in launching these projects. Likewise, refiners in the United States are closely monitoring the possibility of expanding their exports in Europe. Marathon Petroleum senior executive Brian Party expects a possible shipment increase to Europe. And yet, before the ban comes into effect, Europe is anticipated to be well-stocked. The market is unusually quiet, 
says ING strategist Warren Peterson and Uamanthi, even though the looming embargo would significantly impede the flow of oil. Since the beginning of February, the gas oil crack has been decreasing, most likely because the market has had time to adjust to the ban. Before February 5, there was also a substantial rise in the supply of metal distillates in Europe. According to ING, gas oil supplies in the Amsterdam, Rotterdam, Antwerp hub are at an all-time high, surpassing the previous peak recorded in July 2021. And at this point, they have reached their five-year average once again. But once the embargo is implemented, supply is projected to tighten. As a direct response to the current crisis in Ukraine, the European Union is already formulating plans to significantly reduce Russia's earnings from oil exports. On the other hand, there are others in the energy industry who are afraid that these actions might cause significant disruptions in the market. The EU imposed an embargo on the export of Russian oil products months after the West made significant efforts to stop Russia from obtaining income from the export of fossil fuels. In December 2022, the G7 voted to cap the price of Russian oil at $60. This was in addition to other G7 nation sanctions and the European Union's embargo on buying Russian crude oil. In comparison to earlier restrictions, the EU's embargo on petroleum products from Russia is anticipated to result in more difficulties and delays. Also, the 27-nation EU group has prohibited the acquisition, import, or transport of petroleum-based products and crude oil from Russia as part of the sixth round of sanctions on the country. However, political risk consultant Eurasia Group warned that the European Union's impending embargo on crude oil imports from Iran would create more damage than past EU sanctions. This announcement comes after debates over increased oil price caps. Also, as per Bloomberg, the EU and its G7 partners are thinking about putting a cap on high-quality Russian oil at $100 per barrel. This covers diesel as well as a limit of $45 a gallon on less expensive items such as fuel oil and industrial lubricants. The restrictions are set to go into effect but may be altered during negotiations between EU member states and partners. The Eurasia Group issued a warning that if the restrictions are implemented, it is possible that they will be done so at the last minute, which will lead to instability in the market. There will probably be some repercussions from the ban on Russian oil, especially in the beginning as the EU looks for alternative energy supplies. Economist Matthew Sherwood at the Economist Intelligence Unit predicts that this might lead to increased costs for oil products in general. According to the EIU or Economist Intelligence Unit team, Moscow will divert oil from Europe to the Middle East, Africa, China, and India. Meanwhile, Europe is planning to boost its purchases from China, India, the Middle East, and the United States. Initially, analysts in the energy industry were skeptical that the G7 cap would have any significant impact on Russian oil, and they expected Russia to reroute its oil exports to nations like China, India, and Turkey. Despite the European Union's pleas to India and China to accept the price ceiling, India's oil imports are said to have reached a five-month high in December owing to increasing imports of Russian crude oil. In January, China was considered the second-largest Urals oil consumer. Nevertheless, despite dire forecasts, the damages from the sanctions imposed on Russian oil shipments have not been as devastating as anticipated. A leading expert at PVM Oil Associates in London claims that the amount of Russian oil that will be loaded from Baltic ports in January may even rise by 50% from December levels. The analyst said that this is not bad for the country that has the most sanctions in the world. Compared to the earlier crude oil embargo, the restriction on Russian oil product shipments to the EU may now have a bigger effect on the markets. This is due to the fact that transportation costs and prices are major considerations. It is believed that shipping Russian oil products by water is more difficult than shipping crude oil. This is because the tankers need to go through an intensive cleaning procedure whenever they go from transporting one type of fuel to another, such as gasoline to lubricants. In addition, the transportation of oil products requires more boats than the transportation of crude oil as fuel tankers are significantly smaller than crude carriers. 
If Russia intends to reroute its product flows toward Asia, this presents a number of logistical challenges and drives up the cost of shipping. It would appear that this video has come to an end. Thank you for watching this far. If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe, give it a like, and comment below with your thoughts on what you've seen so far. This is Finance Sense, here to help you stay updated on all the most recent developments in the world's economies and financial markets. Have a nice day and we'll see you in the next video.